Well, welcome back. We're down to the countdown here. Just a few days left of school, and uh, we're wrapping up our section on probability. So this probability is a little different that we're going to do um, the next two days here. Today, we're going to focus on the word exactly. So that's how we'd like you to title your notebook today. Exactly. And that's the key word you're going to look for in all the sentences. So we're going to start with something called a binomial experiment. And you've probably guessed it by now, binomial, what number comes to your mind when you hear that word binomial? Hopefully you're thinking two. So we are looking for two outcomes. And let me give you a few examples of experiments that have two outcomes. The first one I can think of is flipping a coin. And basically, two things can happen when you flip a coin. Either you get a heads or a tails. So this is a binomial experiment, something that only has two outcomes. Now, the next one might sound a little silly to you, but go with me on this. I am going to say rolling a die. Has only two outcomes. And I guess it's how I word my question here. Now, surely you're thinking a die is six sides, so maybe it doesn't have two outcomes. But think about this. If I ask, what is the probability that you roll a three when you roll a die? Well, what could happen? Either you're going to get a three, or you're not. So I would say that's two outcomes. Either I'm going to get the three that I wanted, or I'm not going to get the three. So that's going to be considered a binomial experiment as well, having two outcomes. You get what you want, or you don't. So Bernoulli here. Bernoulli is just this famous mathematician who came up with this binomial experiment. So every now and then, instead of hearing the word binomial, sometimes I call it a Bernoulli experiment, but it means the same thing. We're looking for two outcomes. He's just the, the founder of this idea. So the other nice part about this is they all have this wonderful formula to go with this. So I'm going to write it down first. It might look a little overwhelming. Just write it down and we'll talk through it. The formula is NCR. I'm going to use success to the r and failure to the n minus r. And like I said, I'll go through and explain what every single one of these variables mean. All right, so take the time to write down what each of these stand for. First and foremost, here's n. n is the number of trials. For example, if I was going to flip a coin 100 times, that would be my n, the number of trials. R stands for the number of events you want. So let's say I flip a coin 100 times and I want to see 20 heads. That would be my R value. This S stands for the success, the probability an event will occur. So if I want to see a heads occur, it would occur one out of two times. Failure is the probability the event will not occur. Okay, so this is the event will occur and not occur. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that we have a few exponents here. And to me, this is the one that sticks out. This R value here better be the same exponent here. So you should have the same number on either side of the S. And then you'll notice the exponent here is just N minus R. So it's just this original number of times minus the number of times you want. And like I said, the more examples we do, the easier this will be. All right, so let's dive right in. All right, we're going to start with just a nice multiple choice question, looking for the setup of the question. So the probability that Kayla will score above a 90 on a mathematics test is 4 out of 5. What is the probability she will score above a 90 on exactly 3 out of 4 tests this quarter? All right, so our keyword is exactly. That is the word I'm looking for. That word right there tells me I can use the formula we just talked about. NCR, success to the R, failure to the n minus r. And again, the more times you say it to yourself and write it down, the easier it will become. Remember, this r and this r should be the same. Okay, so n is the total number of trials. How many tests is she going to take this quarter? Well, it says she will score on exactly three out of the four tests. So she will take four tests, and you want her to score that 90 on exactly three. Okay, so total number of trials how many you want to happen. Now, our success is the probability that she will score above a 90. And they tell you in there, she will score above a 90 four out of five times. OK, 
Okay, now remember the same number here is on either side, so that's also a 3. These R should be the same number. All right, use a little common sense. If it happens 4 out of 5 times, how many times is it failing? Well, if there's a total of 5, right, 4 out of 5, that means it's failing 1 out of 5. And now to get this exponent, we're going to subtract n minus r. So here's my n value minus my r value. So I would say to the 1. At this point, once you have a setup, it's strictly just plug and jug on the calculator and get your answer. Um, but since this was multiple choice, I'm just going to match it up. And it looks like to me I would go with choice 1. 4 combinations 3, 4 fifths to the 3rd, and 1 fifth to the 1st there. All right, let's try another one. When rolling a die 100 times, what is the probability of rolling a 4 exactly 25 times? So I put that word in blue for you on purpose here. Exactly is the keyword that triggers you to say NCR, success to the R, remember those are going to match, failure to the N minus R, subtract those original two. All right, so just a lot of self-talk. N, what is the total number of times? 100. How many do you want this to happen? Well, it said 25 times. So I need a success and a failure. Now, they don't come out and tell you the success, so you have to use some common sense again. How many ways can you roll a 4 on a die? Well, how many 4s are there? I believe there's just 1 out of 6 sides. So I would say the probability of rolling a 4 is 1 out of 6. Raised to the 25. Remember, these have to be the same. All right, here comes that common sense. If it happens one out of six times, then it's failing, hopefully you've guessed it, five out of six. If you're not sure where I'm getting that from, these two numbers have to total your denominator. One out of six, five out of six, make a total of one. And this is going to be to the 100 minus 25, so do that math in your head, I would say to the 75. So again, I'm just taking my N minus my R. Now, like I said, this is just strictly plug and chug on your calculator. So we want you to grab your calculator and try typing that in. Do not do it separately. This all goes in on the same line. Okay, don't do this piece and this piece and this piece separately. Type it all in on one line. So when I type mine in, I get this lovely decimal. Now, we've talked quite a bit about rounding early and storing. We don't want to round this um, answer off unless they specifically tell us to. So 99% of the time, we probably just want to, at this point, go to that math button, fraction. It's a lot nicer to write your answer as a fraction. Now, if I do that on my calculator, it doesn't actually give me one for this one. So this one's just not possible to put as a fraction. So this will be my final answer. Okay, but I just want to be clear. Math um, probability can be expressed three ways. We can either have a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. And really pay attention to the question whether which one it wants. Um, I would say most of the time I would leave it as a fraction unless it specifically says one of these two or it's impossible to make a fraction. All right, let's try another one. Question three. Which fraction represents the probability of obtaining exactly eight heads in ten tosses of a fair coin? So again, that key trigger word that you need to be looking for is the word exactly. That tells us to use that formula. NCR, success to the R, Again, these two should be the same. Failure to the n minus r. All right, and that's all from the word exactly. All right, so, you know, don't be afraid to talk to yourself. Just go through and ask your question. What is the total number of times we're doing this? Which fraction represents the probability of exactly eight heads in ten tosses? So I would say we're tossing it ten times, and I want eight of them. Okay, ten C8. Now here's the probability part. What are we trying to get? Well, we're trying to get a heads. And they don't come out and tell you it, so use common sense again. When you flip that coin, how many ways can you get a heads? Well, there is one head out of two. Raised to the eight, should have the same number on the side of the S. If it happens one out of two times, then it fails one out of two times. Raised to the 10 minus eight, so raised to the second. And again, at this point, I'm going straight to my calculator and typing it in. Um, I get this lovely decimal, 0 0.0439, blah, 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 blah. I'm going math frac, because I don't like writing all those decimals down. And it's not as accurate as my fraction. And that gives me 45 over 1024.
And I'm just going to scroll up and see if that was an option. 45 over 1024, I believe, was choice A there. All right. So just take your time reading the setup, and, um, and hopefully it's not too ugly. You know, if it is, feel free to come tomorrow with questions, and we'll try to straighten everything out. Well, we've got just one more. Um, and take your time, read it, try it on your own, and see if we get the same answer here. At a certain intersection, the light for the eastbound traffic is red for 15 seconds, yellow for 5, green for 30. Find the probability that out of the next 8 eastbound cars that arrive randomly at the light, exactly 3 will be stopped by a red light. Alright, so hopefully you saw that trigger word, exactly, and CR, success to the R, failure to the N minus R. And again, that whole word comes from the word exactly, this whole formula. All right, you try, pause me, try plugging them in yourself, and we'll see if we get the same setup. So it says, out of the next eight, will exactly three. So that's telling me I have a total of eight, and I want three of them. I'm going to go get my exponents right away. I know that's going to be a 3. This is going to be 8 minus 3, which is 5. All right, so now I need to find my probability. I'm looking to be stopped by a red light. So how many ways can you be red? Well, it says for 15 seconds, and that's out of how many? So I would just say that's 15 plus 5 plus 30 for a total of 50 seconds. Okay, so I would be at a red light for 15 out of 50 seconds. If it happens 15 out of 50, how many times does it fail out of 50? Well, again, if it happens 15 out of 50, I'm just going to subtract from 50, and I get 35 out of 50. These two have to total my denominator together. And if you've got your setup, then again, it's just straight to the calculator, type your, your equation in and get your answer. Um, some people like to reduce these fractions in here, and by all means, that's totally up to you. You're fair to do that. It's fair game. Um, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is for now. So a total of 8. I want 3. That's where those came from. I'm looking for red, so that's 15 out of 50, and I'm not red for 35 out of 50. And I've got a final answer here. Um, again, I'm going to try my math fraction, because that's a lot nicer looking. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't give me a fraction, so I'm stuck with this ugly decimal as my answer. Now, if I wanted a percent, remember, you would just move your decimal two places to the right. So this is equivalent to 25.412184%. Okay, so again, be real careful whether the question wants a fraction, decimal, or percent. And like we said, most of the time, we'll go with the fractional answer. So, um... Hopefully, you've got a, a good handle on it. Um, and again, feel free to come with questions tomorrow. That's what we're there for. And uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Have a great night.